In this video we will learn current events or electrical current and how it works. In a previous video you learned that charges can be collected in materials and when opposites attract you experience static electricity. Electrons can also be influenced to move in a coordinated fashion through a conductive material. This uniform motion of electrons is what we call electrical current. Electricity is created as the electrons collide and transfer from one atom to another. This is how we have electrical current, also called dynamic electricity, which is in contrast to static electricity, the unmoving accumulation of electrical charge. Just like water flowing through the emptiness of a pipe, electrons are able to move within and between the empty spaces of the atoms of a conductor. The conductor may appear to be solid to our eyes, as with any metal, but any material composed of atoms is mostly empty space. The amount of current generated by an atom is based on the number of electrons in the valence shell. Some elements hold their electrons tightly, making it an insulator. Generally, when five to eight electrons occupy the outer ring, the material will be an insulator of electricity. Some elements hold their electrons together more loosely, making it a conductor. For example, copper. If there are one to three electrons in the valence shell, then the electrons are more free to move, making the element a conductor. Less is more for electricity. Substances that allow electrical charges to pass through are called conductors. All metals such as silver, copper, aluminum, iron, etc. are good conductors, and so is water. Other substances, called insulators, do not allow charges to move freely through them. Some examples of insulators are hard rubber, glass, silicone, and wood. Electricity can travel through something when its structure allows electrons to move through it easily. Metals like copper have free electrons that are not bound tightly to their parent atoms. These electrons flow freely throughout the structure of copper, enabling an electric current to flow. In rubber, the electrons are more tightly bound. There are no free electrons, and as a result, electricity does not really flow through rubber at all. Conductors that let electricity flow freely are said to have high conductance and low resistance. Insulators that do not allow electricity to flow are the opposite. They have a low conductance and a high resistance. The copper example shown here has one electron in the valence shell, making it an excellent conductor of electricity. Understanding the difference between conductors and insulators is really important when dealing with electricity. Electricity is very dangerous. Small amounts of electricity can be harmful, even fatal. Take care to stay away from water and metals when there is a lightning storm or when electrical current is present, because those materials will allow charge to flow more freely. Notice on the pliers used to work with electrical equipment, the conductors are the metal parts. Notice the metal in the wiring and on the pliers. In order to make the tool safe, an insulator, plastic, has been used to coat the metal wires and the metal on the plier handles. That completes our lesson on the basics of electricity. Be sure you can identify conductors and insulators, and in the coming lessons we will learn properties of electrical current and apply them to electrical circuits.